First Story The Whispering Pines by Mark Johnson It was a crisp October day when my friends and I decided to go on a hiking trip in the dense forests of upstate New York. The colorful leaves created a picturesque backdrop, and the air was filled with the earthy scent of pine. Our plan was to follow an old, abandoned trail that led deep into the woods, far from the usual tourist spots. Little did we know, this journey would turn into a chilling experience none of us would ever forget. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the tall, ancient trees cast long shadows across our path. The only sounds were the rustling leaves and the occasional chirping of birds. The silence was eerie, but we attributed it to our remote location. The trail was overgrown, and it was evident that it hadn't been used in quite some time. Our excitement turned into unease as we pushed forward. Hours passed, and the sun began to dip below the horizon. We realized that we had lost track of time and had ventured deeper into the forest than we had intended. Panic started to set in as we tried to retrace our steps, but the overgrown trail made it nearly impossible to discern the right path. It was then that we heard it, the faint whispering of voices. Huddled together, we strained our ears to decipher the source of the sound. It seemed to be coming from all around us, as if the forest itself was whispering secrets. The voices were indistinct, but they were accompanied by faint laughter and a hint of malice. Fear gnawed at us as we realized there was no logical explanation for the voices. We decided to follow the whispers, hoping they would lead us to safety or other hikers who could guide us back. As we trekked deeper into the forest, the voices became clearer and the laughter more malevolent. It was as if we were being taunted by an unseen presence. Just when we thought we couldn't take it any longer, we stumbled upon a clearing in the woods. In the center of the clearing, we found a ramshackle cabin, its time-worn wood barely holding itself together. The voices seemed to be emanating from the cabin, growing louder and more sinister. My curiosity got the better of me, and I cautiously approached the cabin. As I reached for the door, it creaked open with an eerie groan revealing the darkness inside. The voices were now deafening, and the laughter sent shivers down my spine. My friends watched in terror as I stepped inside, a decision I would later regret. The interior of the cabin was a nightmare. A flickering, dimly lit room revealed a scene straight out of a horror movie. Rusty cages lined the walls, each containing a gruesome sight. In one cage, a mannequin dressed in rags. In another, a collection of old, weathered dolls. The whispers and laughter now seemed to be coming from these inanimate objects. As I backed away from the terrifying scene, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned to see a gaunt, disheveled man standing in the corner. His eyes were wild and his lips moved incoherently as he continued to mutter the same phrases over and over. The words were unintelligible, but the malice in his voice was unmistakable. Panicking, I fled the cabin and rejoined my friends outside. We ran through the forest, following our instincts, until we finally stumbled upon a well-trodden path that eventually led us back to civilization. The whispers and laughter continued to haunt us, and we couldn't shake the feeling that the man in the cabin was still out there, lurking in the shadows. To this day, I can't explain the strange voices or the horrors we encountered in those woods. We never reported the cabin or the man to the authorities, fearing that our own presence in the remote area might lead to questions we didn't want to answer. The whispering pines still haunt my dreams— a chilling reminder that sometimes, in the depths of the forest, reality can take a sinister turn. Second Story The Lost Trail by Sarah Mitchell My friends and I were avid hikers, 
and we often ventured into the woods around our hometown in the Pacific Northwest. One sunny morning, we decided to explore a new trail that we had heard about from fellow hikers. It was an unmarked, off-the-beaten-path kind of place, known for its wild beauty and solitude. We were determined to discover its secrets. The trailhead was concealed in a remote corner of the state forest, and our journey began with enthusiasm. The dense canopy of ancient trees cast a dappled pattern of sunlight and shadow on the forest floor. The air was filled with the earthy scent of moss and damp leaves. It was the perfect setting for an adventure, or so we thought. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the path became narrower and less distinguishable. We followed faded blazes on trees, but they soon disappeared altogether. Fear began to creep in as we realized that we were lost. Panic set in as the hours passed, and we had no idea how to get back to civilization. It was late afternoon when we heard the sound that sent a chill down our spines, a low, guttural growl, followed by the snapping of twigs and leaves being crushed underfoot. We froze in our tracks, eyes darting in every direction trying to catch a glimpse of what was lurking in the underbrush. From the corner of my eye, I spotted a figure moving through the trees. It was a man, but his presence was unnerving. He wore tattered clothes and had wild, unkempt hair. In his hands he clutched a rusted, serrated knife. He didn't make a sound, but his eyes burned with a malevolent intensity. We decided to retreat quietly, hoping he hadn't seen us. As we backtracked, the man followed, always maintaining a distance, but never letting us out of his sight. We knew that we were being hunted, and our hearts pounded in our chests. As night fell, our pursuer's presence grew more menacing. He seemed to be toying with us, staying just beyond the reach of our flashlights letting us glimpse his silhouette in the darkness. The forest became a labyrinth of fear, and we had no choice but to keep moving, trying to find a way out. Exhausted and terrified, we stumbled upon a dilapidated shack in a small clearing. It was the only shelter we had found, and we had no other options. We entered the shack, securing the door as best we could. The night was filled with restless fear as we listened to the man's eerie, disjointed laughter outside as he circled our refuge. Morning came, and the man was gone. We emerged from the shack, shaken but relieved. We continued our search for the trail that would lead us out of the forest. Hours turned into days, and we survived on dwindling supplies and sheer determination. Finally, we stumbled upon a hunter's camp, long abandoned, but still containing a working radio. We called for help, and a rescue team was dispatched. As we were airlifted out of the forest, we couldn't help but wonder who the man was and what his intentions had been. The experience left us scarred, a chilling reminder that nature can hide not only beauty but also its own kind of darkness. Third Story, The Mysterious House in the Woods by John Carter Growing up in rural Ohio, I was no stranger to the eerie tales and ghost stories that seemed to permeate the small town surrounding our family farm. One particular story had always sent shivers down my spine, a tale of a mysterious house deep in the forest, a place that was rumored to be haunted. One summer evening, my curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to venture into the woods in search of this infamous house. Armed with a flashlight and a sense of adventure, I followed an old, overgrown trail into the heart of the forest. The sun was setting, and the woods took on a foreboding atmosphere as shadows lengthened. The forest seemed to close in around me, and the trees creaked in the wind, creating an eerie symphony. As I pressed on, the trail led me to a small clearing, and there, 
in the middle of the woods stood the house from the stories. It was a decrepit, two-story structure with boarded-up windows and a sagging roof. As I approached the house, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The air was heavy with silence, broken only by the rustling of leaves. The atmosphere was oppressive, but my curiosity drove me forward. I approached the front door, and with a hesitant push, it creaked open. Inside, the house was filled with an overwhelming sense of abandonment. Cobwebs clung to the corners, and the floorboards groaned under my weight. It was clear that no one had lived there in decades. I moved through the dimly lit rooms, each one more unsettling than the last. As I explored the upper floor, I heard a faint, distant sound, a woman softly sobbing. The chilling sound sent shivers down my spine. I followed the sound to a room at the end of the hallway, where the crying seemed to originate. The door was ajar, and I hesitated before pushing it open. Inside, I found a small, dusty nursery, frozen in time. A crib sat in one corner, and faded wallpaper adorned the walls. In the center of the room, a rocking chair moved back and forth, as if by an invisible hand. The source of the crying was a spectral figure, a woman dressed in old-fashioned attire, her face obscured by her hands. I watched in horror as she continued to weep, seemingly oblivious to my presence. Fear gripped me, and I fled from the house as fast as my legs could carry me. The night had fallen, and the woods were enveloped in darkness. I stumbled my way back to our farm, my heart pounding, and I vowed never to return to that accursed place. The tale of the mysterious house had become all too real, a haunting experience that would forever linger in my memory. Each of these stories has its own unique twist, but they share the common theme of exploring the eerie and unsettling aspects of the forest. In these realistic horror tales, the woods themselves become a character, concealing secrets, danger, and the unknown. Fourth Story The Phantom Stalker by Emily Davis it was a late summer evening when my friends and I decided to go camping in the dense woods of northern Michigan. The area was known for its pristine wilderness and scenic beauty, making it the perfect backdrop for an outdoor adventure. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we set up our campsite and gathered around the crackling fire. We shared stories, roasted marshmallows, and laughed into the night. As the moon cast its silvery glow over the forest, we heard a sound that sent shivers down our spines, a faint rustling in the underbrush, as if someone was moving through the trees. We dismissed it as a passing animal and continued our merriment. But the rustling persisted and grew closer. I grabbed my flashlight and scanned the darkness, only to reveal nothing but the trees and the deep shadows. My friends and I exchanged uneasy glances, unable to shake the feeling that we were being watched. As the night wore on, the rustling turned into quiet footsteps, and they seemed to be circling our camp. The forest was silent except for those eerie, stealthy movements. I decided to investigate, holding my breath as I ventured into the woods, flashlight in hand. I caught a glimpse of a shadowy figure, obscured by the trees. It was a man, his features hidden in the darkness, but his presence undeniable. I called out, asking if he needed help, but he didn't respond. Instead, he continued to circle us, his movements purposeful and unsettling. Fearful and unsure of the stranger's intentions, we decided to pack up and leave our campsite behind. As we retreated, the man followed us, always keeping his distance, never uttering a word. His presence was a haunting reminder that the forest could hold more than just the wonders of nature. Eventually, we reached the safety of our car and drove away, 
but the man continued to stand in the shadows, watching us until we were out of sight. We never reported the incident to the authorities, fearing that our encounter with the stalker would only invite more questions and anxiety. To this day, I can't explain who that man was or why he chose to follow us in the dead of night. The experience left us with a lingering sense of unease, a chilling reminder that even in the beauty of the woods, there can be danger lurking in the darkness. Fifth Story, The Vanishing Hiker by Robert Anderson My passion for hiking often led me to the pristine wilderness of the Appalachian Mountains. One summer, I embarked on a solo journey to explore a remote trail in the Smoky Mountains, seeking solitude and the thrill of adventure. Little did I know that this trip would lead to a harrowing experience that would test my courage and sanity. The trail I had chosen was a seldom visited one, known for its breathtaking vistas and challenging terrain. As I ascended into the mountains, the forest grew dense, and the only sounds were the chirping of birds and the rustling of leaves. It was the perfect setting for a solitary hike, or so I thought. Hours into my journey, I encountered another hiker coming down the trail. He looked disheveled and out of sorts, his eyes wild and unfocused. He muttered incomprehensible words as he passed me, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. I decided to press on, hoping to put the strange encounter behind me. As the day wore on, I realized that I had lost track of time and distance. The trail seemed to wind endlessly through the forest and my surroundings had become disorienting. Panic set in as I realized that I was lost in the vast wilderness of the Smoky Mountains. As night fell, I set up my camp in a small clearing, my flashlight revealing the encroaching darkness of the forest. The eerie silence was broken only by the occasional hoot of an owl or the rustling of nocturnal creatures. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone. In the middle of the night, I awoke to a strange sound, a faint, haunting melody that seemed to emanate from the depths of the forest. It was a tuneless, discordant song, and its source was elusive. I followed the sound, flashlight in hand, into the dark woods. The melody led me to a surreal scene, a circle of flickering torches, their flames casting dancing shadows on the trees. In the center of the circle, I found the disheveled hiker I had encountered earlier, still muttering incoherently. He seemed to be in a trance, his eyes vacant as he chanted the eerie tune. Fear gripped me, and I fled from the bizarre scene, stumbling through the forest in the darkness. I lost track of time and direction, and my surroundings became increasingly surreal. Trees seemed to move and the very ground beneath me felt unsteady. Finally, as dawn broke, I stumbled upon a familiar trail and followed it back to civilization. I reported the strange encounter to the authorities, but they found no trace of the disheveled hiker or the eerie melody. The experience left me with a lingering sense of dread and a chilling reminder that even in the most beautiful of places, the line between reality and the inexplicable can blur. Each of these stories explores the unsettling and mysterious aspects of the forest, from encounters with eerie individuals to unexplained phenomena. In these realistic horror tales, the woods become a place where the unknown and the unexplainable can intrude upon the ordinary, leaving those who venture there with a lasting sense of unease. Sixth Story the Disappearing Family by Maria Santos Our family had a tradition of taking an annual camping trip to the forests of Oregon. We loved the rugged wilderness and the escape from the hustle and bustle of city life. One summer, we decided to venture deeper into the woods than ever before, aiming to camp in an untouched part of the forest. 
The excitement of exploring uncharted territory quickly turned into a chilling ordeal that none of us could have anticipated. As we hiked deeper into the dense forest, we felt a growing sense of isolation. The trees towered above us, their thick canopies blocking out the sun. The air was cool and damp, and the usual sounds of nature seemed eerily muted. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath. After a day of hiking, we set up camp by a picturesque, remote river. We were miles away from civilization, and it was both thrilling and unsettling. As we settled around the campfire for the evening, we heard a distant, faint humming sound, like the vibrations of a musical instrument. The humming grew louder and more intense, echoing through the forest, but we couldn't pinpoint its source. It was as if the very air around us was vibrating with an otherworldly energy. My family exchanged nervous glances, and our sense of unease deepened. The humming intensified, and with it came a strange sensation, a feeling of disorientation and dizziness. We clung to each other as the world around us seemed to shift and warp. The trees became distorted and the ground beneath our feet felt unsteady. In an instant, the world around us vanished, and we found ourselves in an entirely different place. We were no longer in the forest of Oregon. The landscape was surreal, a bizarre combination of twisted trees, luminous plants, and a sky that had an unnatural hue. Panic set in as we realized that we were no longer in our world. We desperately searched for a way back, but the forest we had entered was an alien realm, defying all logical explanation. We encountered strange creatures that seemed to be composed of shifting shapes and colors, and the very fabric of this place seemed to defy the laws of physics. We wandered for what felt like an eternity, trying to find a way back to our own reality, but the forest refused to release its grip on us. Time passed in a disjointed manner, and we aged, our hair turning gray, while the forest remained unchanged. One day, we stumbled upon an ancient, gnarled tree that seemed to pulsate with a strange energy. It was our only hope. With trembling hands, we touched the tree, and the world around us shifted once more. We found ourselves back in the familiar forest of Oregon, but the experience had left its mark on us. We were no longer the same family that had set out on the camping trip. We had aged, and the memories of the surreal forest haunted us. To this day, we can't explain what happened or how we found our way back. The forest held us captive, offering a glimpse into an alternate reality that defied all reason. Our annual camping trips came to an end and the memory of the disappearing family remains a chilling reminder that sometimes, the boundary between our world and the unknown can blur in the most unexpected of places. Seventh Story, The Enigmatic Guide by William Foster A few years ago, I embarked on a solo hiking trip in the remote forests of the Black Hills in South Dakota. I had heard stories of the rugged beauty and isolation of the area and was eager to experience it for myself. Little did I know that my adventure would lead to a series of perplexing encounters and an unsettling journey into the heart of the unknown. I began my hike on a crisp autumn morning, navigating the narrow, winding trails that crisscrossed the dense forest. The scent of pine and the sound of rustling leaves were the only companions on my journey. Hours turned into days as I lost myself in the vastness of the wilderness. One evening, as I set up my camp deep within the forest, I heard a sound that sent a chill down my spine, a soft, melodic humming that seemed to emanate from just beyond the trees. I strained to identify the source but saw nothing unusual. The humming continued throughout the night, a haunting lullaby that echoed through the darkness. The following day, the humming persisted, 
and I decided to investigate. I followed the sound deeper into the forest, guided by an inexplicable compulsion. The melody led me to a clearing where I found an old, weathered man seated on a fallen tree. His appearance was unlike any person I had ever encountered. He had long, unkempt hair, a beard that reached his chest, and eyes that held a profound and ancient wisdom. The man smiled kindly and introduced himself as Elias, a guide of the forest. He explained that he had lived in the Black Hills for as long as he could remember, and his purpose was to assist lost souls like me in finding their way. I was grateful for the guidance and accepted his offer to show me the way out of the forest. As we walked, Elias shared stories of the wilderness, its mysteries, and the peculiar events that had occurred over the years. He spoke of peculiar sightings, strange disappearances, and the sense of being watched by an unseen presence. His tales were unsettling, but his calming presence made me feel safe. As the days passed, I began to notice strange occurrences in the forest. The trees seemed to move and shift, the shadows took on an uncanny life of their own, and the air was charged with a peculiar energy. Elias assured me that it was merely the essence of the forest, but doubt began to gnaw at me. One evening, we reached a particularly dense thicket, and Elias turned to me with a knowing look. He said that it was time for me to continue on my own, and I would find my way out if I followed my instincts. With that, he vanished into the forest, leaving me alone in the eerie thicket. I pushed forward, the sense of being watched and the enigmatic occurrences continuing to unnerve me. I lost track of time and direction, and the forest seemed to resist my efforts to leave. It was as if I had entered an alternate reality, and the very laws of nature were bent. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I stumbled upon a well-trodden path that led me back to civilization. I was disheveled and disoriented, but I had escaped the mysterious clutches of the Black Hills. The memory of Elias, the enigmatic guide, and the forest's strange mysteries haunted me long after my journey ended. I couldn't explain the surreal experiences I had encountered, but they served as a chilling reminder that the heart of the unknown can lurk in even the most serene and inviting of places. Eighth Story, The Haunting Laughter by Laura Williams Growing up in a small, remote village in the Bavarian Alps, I had always been drawn to the lush, ancient forests that surrounded our community. The stories of mystical creatures and supernatural phenomena were an integral part of our folklore, and as a child, I had dismissed them as mere tales to keep us entertained. However, a chilling encounter in the forest one summer night shattered my skepticism and left me with an unshakable fear of the woods. It was a warm and moonlit night when I decided to explore a forest path that led deeper into the wilderness. The trees loomed overhead like silent sentinels, and the forest floor was carpeted with fragrant pine needles. The solitude was comforting, and the sounds of rustling leaves and nocturnal creatures made me feel alive. As I ventured deeper, a faint sound reached my ears a soft, melodic laughter that seemed to float on the breeze. I paused to listen, thinking it was a trick of the wind or perhaps a nocturnal bird. But the laughter persisted, and it held an eerie, ethereal quality that sent shivers down my spine. I decided to follow the laughter, guided by a growing sense of curiosity and unease. It led me deeper into the forest, and with every step, the laughter seemed to grow closer. It was as if someone or something was playing a sinister game with me. After what felt like an eternity, I stumbled upon a clearing in the forest, illuminated by the silvery glow of the moon. In the center of the clearing, I saw a young girl, no older than ten, 
her hair as dark as night and her eyes reflecting the pale light. She was dressed in an archaic gown, and her laughter had a ghostly, chilling quality. I approached her cautiously, asking if she was lost or needed help. But the girl's laughter only grew more unnerving. She beckoned me to follow her, her voice soft and melodic. Against my better judgment, I followed her deeper into the forest, my heart pounding. As we ventured further, the forest around us seemed to change. The trees grew twisted and gnarled, and the moonlight cast long, eerie shadows that danced along the forest floor. The laughter turned into a chorus of voices, all young and ghostly, echoing through the woods. I realized that I was lost, and panic set in. The ghostly children led me in circles, their laughter taunting and eerie. I couldn't escape the enchantment that held me captive in this haunted forest. Finally, as dawn broke, the apparitions vanished, and I found myself back in the familiar woods of my village. I rushed home, my heart pounding, and told my family of my haunting experience. They shared stories of the forest's dark past, where tales of ghostly children and mysterious laughter had been whispered for generations. The memory of that chilling night in the forest haunted me, and I never ventured into the woods alone again. The laughter and the enigmatic children remained a haunting reminder that the beauty of the forest could hide dark and unexplainable mysteries, waiting to ensnare those who dared to explore its depths. Ninth Story The Abandoned Camp by Daniel Carter Last summer, my friends and I decided to go on a camping trip deep in the heart of the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. We were seasoned campers, having explored countless remote wilderness areas, but nothing could have prepared us for the eerie and unsettling encounter we would have in those dense woods. The journey began as a thrilling adventure, with us setting up camp by a pristine mountain lake. We marveled at the untouched beauty of the area, surrounded by dense pine forests. It was the perfect setting for an escape from the stresses of daily life, or so we thought. As the sun dipped below the horizon, we gathered around the campfire, telling stories and enjoying the tranquility of the forest. But as night fell, the woods took on a different atmosphere. A chilling silence settled over the area, and the only sound was the crackling of the fire. Late into the night, we heard a faint sound in the distance, a series of soft, rhythmic drumbeats. It was odd and out of place in the serene wilderness. We followed the sound, thinking it might be another group of campers but we soon realized that the drumming was coming from a long-abandoned campsite. The campsite was in disarray, with tents collapsed and gear scattered about. The drumming grew louder, and it was clear that it was coming from a nearby clearing. As we cautiously approached, we saw a group of people gathered around a large bonfire, swaying to the hypnotic rhythm of the drums. They were dressed in tattered, ancient-looking clothes, and their faces were obscured by masks and face paint. The scene was surreal, and we couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. It was as if we had stumbled upon some kind of secret ritual deep in the wilderness. As we observed from the shadows, the group began to chant in an unknown language, their voices growing louder and more intense. The atmosphere was electrifying, and we were gripped with fear and fascination. Suddenly, one of the masked figures turned and pointed directly at us. The chanting stopped, and the group fell silent. We could feel their eyes on us, and a wave of dread washed over us. Without hesitation, we turned and fled back to our campsite. The drumming and chanting followed us, echoing through the forest. We packed up our gear in a frenzy and hiked out of the area as quickly as we could. The eerie experience left us shaken, 
and we couldn't shake the feeling that we had stumbled upon something far beyond our understanding. Tenth Story, The Haunting Echoes by Rebecca Mitchell Growing up in a rural town in the Appalachian region, I had always felt a deep connection to the woods that surrounded us. The dense forest held a mysterious allure, and I often ventured into the wilderness alone to explore. However, one haunting encounter would change my perspective on the woods forever. One autumn afternoon, I decided to hike to a remote waterfall deep within the forest. The leaves had turned fiery shades of red and orange, and the air was crisp with the scent of fallen leaves. The solitude was comforting, and I felt at peace in the heart of the woods. As I neared the waterfall, I heard a strange sound, like an eerie whisper carried on the wind. I paused to listen, convinced that it was a trick of the forest. But the whisper persisted, growing louder and more distinct. I followed the sound, which led me to an ancient, gnarled tree. It was as if the whispers were emanating from the very bark of the tree. The words were unintelligible, and the voices were hauntingly repetitive, as if trapped in a never-ending loop. Fear gripped me, but curiosity urged me to touch the tree. As my hand made contact with the rough bark, the whispers grew more intense. The voices seemed to echo in my mind, as if they were telling a story of a forgotten past. The forest around me started to shift and change, the trees bending and distorting as if in response to the whispers. It was as if I had entered another world, a place where the boundary between the living and the dead blurred. I realized I was no longer alone. Figures began to emerge from the trees, spectral forms that moved with a ghostly grace. They were dressed in outdated, tattered clothes, and their faces were obscured by shadow. It was as if I had stumbled upon the echoes of people long gone. The figures beckoned me to follow them, their voices filled with longing. I obeyed, my heart pounding, as we ventured deeper into the surreal landscape. The forest was a labyrinth of echoes, and time seemed to lose all meaning. As night fell, the figures vanished, and I found myself back at the base of the ancient tree. The whispers had ceased, and I was alone in the now familiar forest. The echoes of the haunting encounter remained, a chilling reminder that the woods held secrets and mysteries beyond our comprehension. I never ventured into the depths of the forest alone again, haunted by the experience and the enigmatic echoes that lingered in the wilderness. The woods, once a place of solace and adventure, had become a realm of uncertainty and the inexplicable. Thank you for joining us for the whole video. That video you see on screen is one of my favorite. Check it out. If you've enjoyed these horror stories, show your support by hitting the subscribe button. Did this tale send chills down your spine? Let me know in the comments.